Hello there, it's Rob for Waverley Instruments here and um, what you just heard and saw there was the sequencer in Synthetic Materials a reasonably new instrument for contact uh, this can be another overview video focusing on the sequencer I, I have done another one uh, looking at the instrument in a bit more detail so if you're interested please do check that out maybe add it to your watch list or, or what have you um, but today we're it's all going to be about the sequencer so um, I'm going to start pretty much from scratch uh, run through the basics and then get on to some of the more um, hopefully more interesting stuff so I'm going to start with a fairly um, sort of vanilla kind of sounding patch so we start off with the init here and um, I'm going to create a sequence from maybe something a bit more sequencer friendly uh, these guys the distorted uh, basic waves got a little bit more um, nicer attack going on I'm just going to bring the sustain down a bit I think that'll be nice for sequencing, very popcorn. Um, okay, the sequencer. Uh, looks like there's a lot going on, but um, fear not. A lot of this is basic stuff, and then we'll, we'll dig into the, to the fun functions. Um, and what we have here is essentially a 16-step sequencer. You can vary the steps from 2 up to 16. Step length. 16th note up all the way up to eight beats which is um good if you want to do kind of evolving kind of soundscapey stuff um i should mention that one of the uh the demo that we we're listening to there was uh what was it mystic bells suitably bell-like and mystic hope you agree so there's um 25 of these guys and I think that I've tried to sort of showcase various sequencer functions in in these demos uh, anyway we we're um, not going to look at those in great detail but if you want to hear them they are on uh, the website waverly-instruments.com on the synthetic materials page okay so um, let's work with eight steps just so we can kind of be a bit more focused on the basic features if i just um play a note nothing happens what we have to do is actually turn the sequencer on and then i'm i'm driving it here with my mouse trackpad um so hopefully it's a little bit easier to see what's going on if i play the virtual keyboard so i'm gonna kind of hold down this f basically Let's, um, I think we're at 120 BPM, so let's do eighth notes. Okay, you probably hear there's some accents going on there, so it might be worth just diving straight into that. If we look at velocity, we can see um, there are accents on beat one and five, so I just play it again. You can probably hear that uh, we bring some of these guys down a bit it might be a bit more okay uh, next kind of thing that you're probably familiar with with um, step step sequences is gate time again um, we've got slightly longer gate time on one and five we can't hear that loads, but if we bring some of these guys right down. Yeah, these guys are a little bit more, more choppy. Also, if we take the gate time right up 
if you see the parameter value here, we're now over 100%. So the gate time of step four is um, 125%. The reason we might want to do that, if we go to the pitch, I'll talk about this in a bit more detail, but let's whack up the pitch up 12 tones. So we should hear that jump up and pitch on step five. If we went to the instrument and put glide on, which is, um, if you watch the instrument overview, you'll know that that's a legato bass glide. We play that again. It's a way of getting, you know, that classic sort of acidy um, glide between your steps. So what you're essentially doing is is overlapping the gate time to incur the legato glide. Does that make sense? I noticed in my last video I kept saying if that makes sense quite a lot. So I'm going to try and stop myself doing that. And also I noticed whenever I turn anything all the way up, I keep saying let's crank it. So I'm going to try and stop saying that as well, as much. Okay, right. So we, um, velocity and gate, we've kind of covered. Um, we should probably talk about pitch. So what we have here, um, various functions as you go across, the steps will re the, the step indicators will reflect the value for whatever you've chosen across here. Um, I don't know if you hear that police siren outside. <laughs> Might be able to filter that outside. Oh, it's very, very loud nearby. Let's just let that go by. Okay, he's gone. Well, I hope he gets to wherever he is going in a hurry. Okie dokes. Um, We'll just focus on pitch A at the moment. So if you just want to do a traditional kind of step sequence, you basically alter the pitch up and down of each step according to the position of this slider. So if we put it on hold so you can fiddle with it while we're playing, let's do a, a D note. We'll do something kind of with a sort of minor kind of vibe. Okay, instant um, 70s era Tangerine Dream there. And um, so we've got our, our, our pitches there. Something I should also mention is if we go back to say velocity, uh, we've got specific functions for whatever category you've selected here. So we can, we can either init to sensible defaults, we can maximize everything, set to mid values, min values. Um, we can even randomize them. So let's actually let's set that up and just see how that sounds. So you've got a kind of nice bit of randomized velocity. You always quite a nice idea to, to do that on your sequences so that they're, they're not kind of too super robotic sounding. Um, gate times, we can leave that as is for now. Um, something that we can also do is um, turn steps on and off. So if we set it running again. Okie doke. We'll, we'll talk about one of the things over in this section, then we'll come back to the pitch. So at the moment, we've only been working with pitch A. Okay. So remember that. We'll come back to it. Um, 
so whilst on the one hand it's nice to have steps on and off, also um, you can have step probability and you'll see that all the steps are currently at 100%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what we can do, again, if we set it running, I'm going to reduce the probability of some of the steps as it's running. it up. So you can you can add a bit of variation there by just, just changing the probability on a per step basis. Uh, obviously if you have it at zero probability that's essentially the same as turning that step off. Kind of makes sense. Okay, let's go back to pitch A and pitch B because I, I think this is maybe um, one of the things that is a little unusual uh, with the sequencer in synthetic materials. So how does this work? Well, basically, it allows you to to define a different set of pitches for each step. So let's, for example, set them all to plus 12. Okay. So pitch A is what we put in, which was this nice kind of pentatonic minor thing. Um, but pitch B is plus 12. Okay. Now if we run it, it's no different, right? Because what we have to do is go into here and st start to tweak these. So the A, B section it basically allows you to vary the probability between A and B. So at the moment, you can see that it's 100% A, 0% B. If we change the A, B probability to mid, each step is now 50% A, 50% B. So you remember pitch A is what we put in. Pitch B is just going to be 12 semitones above the played note, so one octave above. So it's going to be the, this, this D up. If we play, the, it's on. If we play that guy, we're sometimes going to hear this guy based on 50% probability. Okay. So let's just set that going, see if we can hear that. If you see the little indicators flashing between A and B, that gives you a, a visual cue as to when it's selecting pitch A and when it's selecting pitch B. Okay, so we could, um, going back to A, B, let's randomize it and uh, play it again. Okay, hopefully you're all making sense so far. Um, but let's let's keep it A B as uh, fifty fifty for now. Now, that's not all you can do with pitch A and pitch B, because over to the side here you've got some A B options. Uh, something that might be worth pointing out: a lot of the time in contact, you normally have this info panel hidden, uh, just so you've got a bit more screen space to play with but it's worth um especially if you're unfamiliar with a, a new instrument worth having this open because i've tried to put sort of reasonable help in this info panel here just you know and you might not be using it every day so it's kind of quite handy just to jog your memory anyway Okay, so back to pitch A and B. Um, you see in, in this section here, 
we've got the A or B option selected. So, in fact, reading the info, help, the pitch of step will be A or B, depending on A, B probability. So you get that, it's 50-50% chance of being pitch A or pitch B for each step. And I should add that every time the sequence comes round again, these probabilities are recalculated. Um, so it, it basically, um, it should never sound the same. Should never sound the same twice. Okay. However, what we can also do is have a different, slightly different mode, which is A plus B. Now, what that um, means is that if B is true, I if the probability engine determines that we're going to play a B step, instead of it doing pitch B, it will do pitch A plus pitch B. So, because we set pitch B to be 12 semitones up, that will basically add an octave to our pitch A. I think I've explained that in a much more complicated way than, um, than, was, than it is. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely need more coffee. Excuse me. Okay. You get the idea, I'm sure. So if we're in A plus B mode, it says, okay, if we're going to doing B, let's add B to A. And in our case, because we set all these to 12, it's just going to bump those up an octave. So in A plus B mode, it sounds like this. So you can hear that our little uh, melody, if I can call it that, is kind of got the same vibe. We're randomly adding this octave to it. Okay. We got one more mode, uh, A and B, and that is random. So what random does, it's not completely random. Well, it could be. Okay, we'll we'll get on to how it could be completely random. But what it will do when in random mode, if B is true, so we've got a 50-50 chance of that, remember, then the sequencer will generate a note randomly between pitch A and pitch B. So pitch on this step, it's going to be somewhere between this guy and this guy. Okay, now let's have a listen to that. Now, you may have noticed that that's starting to sound um, maybe not like our original aim of having something nice and um, in the saddest of all keys, kind of like a D minor vibe. So that brings us nicely on to um, pitch quantize. You don't have to have this on if you kind of want to put in fixed steps as we did with our original little eight note motif. Um, but when we start to get into a randomized stuff, we might want to get into um, also scale quantization. So what I'm going to do here is set the root note to D, and we've got loads of scales here to pick from. I think there's 27 or something like that. Um, I'm going to select a minor pentatonic scale because, you know, we're in Berlin, old school sequencing territory here. So um, what could be more old school than D minor pentatonic? Now, remember when our random sequence was starting to give us notes that sounded a little bit kind of a bit jazzy. Well, if we play our sequence again now with uh, pitch quantize on, yeah, 
So it, it's sounding um, basically it's it's correcting notes that have been randomized to this scale for this root note. And in fact, we could go really mad. Let's go mad and go to pitch A or pitch B rather. And let's just randomize all of pitch B and play our sequence again. So it's still sounding nice and uh, minor pentatonic -y. And if we turn the scale quantize off, yeah, so let's get it back on. Uh, where are we? Minor pentatonic. Um, set it back up to the octaves again. Okay. So that's um, that's pitch A B function, and its uh, partner in auto tune crime, the pitch quantize. So I hope you you like that. Um, let's move on over to these guys now, and I think what we'll do is basically. maximize a b probability so we're only hearing pitch a again so sorry if this is getting a little tiresome our, our motif but i want it sort of fixed and instantly recognizable so we can hear the effect of some of the other things we're going to do over here now Let's look at bump. Bump, basically, you can probably guess what it does. If you turn on bump for a step, when the sequencer reaches that step, it is going to reverse direction. And you can do that on a probability basis. But I'm going to turn it all the way up for step five. Let's see what happens when we play the sequence. We look at the pictures, you can see, remember it's on step five. So you, you're almost getting double the length of your sequence fun out of your eight steps. Um, I'd put it on here. You, you start to get, a, you can start to introduce sort of inferred kind of interesting rhythms. See what I mean? It's um, depending on how you subdivide your eight steps, you can kind of you can kind of infer some kind of wacky time signature going on. And then, of course, if you go a bit mad, I'm not going to say crank it because I didn't crank it. <laughs> um, turn on bump. For a few steps, have one really low priority uh, probability, sorry, um, and then set it going. Let's go up an octave because just for a bit of variation. It's almost like a game of sequencer pong. Um, so that's bump. Lots of fun to be had with that, I think. Uh, okay, jump. Jump, as its name suggests, is a bit like bump, but it's a bit uh, more random. So what jump will do is um, if the probability engine determines that a step should jump, it will randomly go 
jump <laughs> to another step in your sequence and then carry on from there. So let's put a jump on five, hundred percent, and set our sequence going. So obviously a lot more random because every time it gets to step five, it's determining a random step to, to jump to. So if you really want to do sort of um, very unpredictable random stuff, as you can you probably imagine, combinations of bump and jump is going gonna, is gonna to unleash all sorts of kind of unpredictable mayhem. Okay. Moving on, now divide is, um, you might have also heard of divide as a sequencer ratcheting. So what divide will do again, probability based, everything's probability based pretty much in the uh, sequencer. Um, divide will subdivide a step by a certain amount. And so again, what would be a good one? We could turn it on, say, for step seven, because we got this octave jump here, so we can kind of we know where it's kind of common. So let's let's turn divide on probability again up a hundred percent. Actually, no, let's make it somewhere around halfway. So it's now got a fifty percent probability of dividing this step seven. Yep. Okay, so let us get that rolling. I was actually waiting for it to not divide there. I thought it might be broken. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to be. So you, you probably heard that it's basically subdividing that into two. That's because on step seven, we've got divide repeat step seven two. We can change that to three. Let's turn it up to 100% probability so we always hear it. So this is subdivision of three. Yeah, and then we can go up to four. If you want to sound really glitchy, you can go up to six. That's about as high as I can go, especially on 16. If we listen to that 16 steps, it's, it's really glitchy. So you probably want to, for 16, you might want to do something like... Uh, three or something like that. Let's go back up to eight steps. So we've got to divide by three on there. Let's randomize the divide by. Let's randomize the divide probability even. Have a listen to that. Bring in our B probability again by setting a B to mid. Now we're getting our shoot octave jump jumps or random. Let's stick with random. So we're in a random mood. do of course if we just sit on over the instrument we turn sync on delay 
let's um, have a 16th note delay, shall we? I can find it. There you go. Um, or dot the dates. Maybe a bit of filter LFO, a bit of resonance. Getting a bit carried away here. I'll get back the sequencer, I promise. Okay. Now we've got one more thing to cover. Actually, did we do a... Should put some glide. As you can see, I haven't scripted this at all, and it's all going a bit random. Um, we've got some glide happening now. Bring the glide time down a bit. Okay. One more thing we can talk about. Over here, we have this um, auto mode. Now, the idea of auto mode is, is kind of just like a little, I don't know, just a little ideas sparker or, or what have you, a little mini catalyst to kind of help an idea along, maybe develop something that might surprise you, might get something kind of, little musical idea going. And um, what I find actually is quite fun is just to run contact standalone and play around with the auto section along with the sequencer, and um, and it just it just might you never know it might set off that little creative spark. So what it, what it basically is, um, you have four sections, and for each four sections you can say, well, I want to shift up or down by so many beats. So it's probably easier to hear than explain. So what I'm going to do is for auto section one, I'm going to have it of shift zero. So that means we're not going to transpose. Shift is basically just transpose up or down. Um, and I'm going to leave it eight beats. Section two, I'm going to shift 5. I'll leave that on 8 beats as well. Section 3, I'm going to shift 7. This is relative to the note we're playing. So you imagine if we're playing the root, that's going to leave it. The first section is going to be unaltered. Second section is going to shift it up 5 um, semitones. Third section is going to shift it up 7. And then for the fourth section, let's shift that to semitones below. Uh, we also need to enable it. So if you keep your eye on these little LEDs, when I play our, our D, which is, remember, is our root note, you should be able to see it go through these sections every, every eight beats. So off we go. For the moment, let's just turn off divide um, so we can hear a little bit better what's going on. So again, I'm just going to play in the lower register this time. And uh, every time you, you start the sequence, it'll start from the first auto section when you have it enabled.
Okay, so you can you can hopefully hear that it's going through these um, sections. Very f last thing, if we go back to the um, sequence that we were playing around with, I, I sort of demoed at the opening of this video. Seems like such a long time ago now. Uh, it's because it was. It was 36 minutes ago. Good grief. Um, and if we look here, we've got pitch A going on pitch B. We've got A, B probability. Intriguingly, only 14 steps. So we've got a bit of a kind of sevens vibe. Velocity quite low. Gate probability. No bump, no jump. Bit of divide going on though, and we've also got auto sections. Root, shift up one, shift minus two, shift one notes beats 14, and our root is C sharp, and our scale is a Japanese insen, which is a, it's a really cool Japanese pentatonic, which is kind of like a double harmonic vibe, but it's only a, a five note scale. And, um, Let's just have a listen when you kind of spend a bit of time on your sequence. Oh, we're also doing A plus B, I should add. Now, when you spend a bit of time on a sequence, you can get some, I think, pretty, pretty nice results. Okay, so um, that's the sequencer in synthetic materials. I uh, hope you like that. hope you like some of the things that maybe are a little bit different. Uh, the mystic bells and whistles, if you like. Oh dear, it's really bad. I probably need to edit that pun out, maybe. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, do check out the other instrument overview video if you haven't already. Uh, like and subscribe, please. Let's see if we can get into double figures by the weekend. That'd be groovy. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Do let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see or hear, questions. And um, I'll do my best to uh, answer and reply. Okay. Uh, be safe, be well, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.